about half of the fish we eat is caught from the wild every year, and the other half is farmed. But farming faces the same problems as land-based agriculture, which is you have to grow too many animals in too small of an area, and they all come from the same genetic ancestors. So you end up with a high degree of disease risk because of the high density and because of the similar genetics. Wild catch fisheries, the biggest problems tend to be overfishing. So either pulling out animals that are the wrong weight, which are not legally supposed to be caught, or just catching many, many more animals than can be regenerated every year naturally. And we're disrupting the ecosystems in the ocean that rely on these animals to perform specific ecosystem functions. And that can create all sorts of instability the second biggest problem in fishing is known as bycatch, which is catching fish that you don't intend to eat. And this is frequently a problem with traditional methods because they use very large nets that indiscriminately catch large volumes of fish. And so we need to find a way to come up with more production to feed growing demand, but without resorting to the same farming techniques that got us this far. On our current trajectory with the current technology and approaches that we're using, we're on our way to depopulating the oceans by the middle of the century and to making most of our fish supply unsustainable by that same time frame. I spent about three and a half years working at a venture studio, helping to build companies out of universities in the US. And one of the core areas of focus for me was biotech related to fish farming, to aquaculture, and realized I think in that moment, actually seeing it firsthand, how much work we had to do to make fish farming sustainable for the long term, uh, and realizing that what got us here in terms of feeding 8 billion people wasn't going to get us to 10 billion without significant improvement. And so I started thinking about alternative approaches and wanted to develop something that would enable the industry to adopt new technology production approaches as opposed to trying to be an end-to-end -end solution um, and so the idea of Umami Meats began as a company to produce technology that would enable industry to create a third way beyond just fishing and farming. Umami Meats is building the operating system for cultivating seafood. We're developing the core infrastructure layer, that's the manufacturing process and the architecture that process would run on, and then partnering with traditional food producers to license technology and enable them to manufacture cultivated foods. Umami Meats is built on creating a more sustainable food system, ensuring food security, and creating a path to feed 10 billion people by 2050. So cultivating seafood starts by developing a cell line where we isolate a stem cell from a fish and then develop what's known as a clone or a single cell that has the right properties to allow us to grow it in large scale. We then grow that in bioreactors to produce many trillions of cells from our initial stem cell. And then we differentiate or turn those cells into muscle and fat. The last step is to then take the muscle and fat and produce final products. And that can be done as 100% cultivated with just the muscle and the fat cells, or it can be done as a hybrid product, including plant proteins and other components to make a product that can maybe be more scalable or more affordable for the mass market. At Umami Meats, we are focusing uh, just on fish, and the species that we work on the most is actually Japanese eel. Uh, reason being that you know Japanese eel is actually critically endangered, and because there's no uh, system that can farm them effectively and also cheaply, and second, because of the price point, is actually very high, so it's easier for us to reach uh, price parity. On top of uh, uh, Japanese eel, we are also focusing on snappers, uh, as well as uh, tuna as well. One of the biggest challenges that we face in cultivated seafood is that we have almost 100 million different combinations of, of variables that could lead us to the optimal process for making cultivated fish. And this is made worse for fish because we know less about them than we do about mammals. And, and we can't take as much information from human therapeutics work that's been done for decades. So we have to figure out the right combination of cell, feed, uh, media, as well as then the process conditions to grow these cells to make cultivated fish that tastes good, is affordable, and can be scaled. And so we use machine learning from the very beginning to gather data on all of these parameters, everything from what we're feeding the cells, what genes they're expressing, and how the products taste. And then we start asking questions of these models to ascertain what the best feeding strategy might be, and to look for predictive indicators very early in the process that will help us to save quite a lot of time in the manufacturing scale up. So we're still in the early stages of development and bringing products to market, but we've already started to engage many of the players in the traditional supply chain. Everybody from companies that are running fishing fleets, 
to end product producers and distributors and restaurants. And our goal is to bring to the table a consortium of players who can create a new value chain around Cultivated by leveraging the strengths they already have in the existing value chain. One of the key ideas behind our business model is that we want to be a technology hub at the center of an ecosystem of partners that make this possible uh, to produce Cultivated at scale and get it to customers around the world. So to do that, we've sought out partners upstream of us to help us secure supply for critical components, uh, manufacturing partners in the middle, as well as downstream with traditional food manufacturers. Recently, I attended one of the conference in Malaysia, and the organizer of the conference actually uh, gave a very interesting analogy. So he said that, you know, last time when freezers was first invented, people used to call ice as artificial ice, but now people just call them ice. And I think same thing for cultivated meat as well. Now people call it cultivated meat or thick meat or lab-grown meat. Uh, but in the future, we are just going to call it just meat. So over the coming decades, we're approaching a cliff and a point of no return for being able to salvage our oceans and our ecosystems that we rely upon to produce our food. We need to take action now to produce more sustainable food supply that will help to ensure food security for people around the world, but also to make sure that we can feed 10 billion people for generations to come without relying on ecosystems that are going to be impacted by climate change. Our view on this is that cultivated can play a major role in localizing food supply, shortening supply chains, removing contaminants from the food system, and enabling responsiveness to what consumers desire so we can create what people want, where they want it, and when they want it.